congratulations on the sweep. Can you just take us through the emotions? What are they right now after moving on uh, to another round in the playoffs with this group? And then uh, that hug you shared with Chris after the game, what, what was that moment like for you two? Well, I think it's <clears throat> the emotions are, you know, happy, grateful, um, tired, <laughs> um, relieved, and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those uh, moments for me that, quite frankly, I never thought I'd have a chance to experience. Um, and so for me, I, I just have a level of gratitude that I can't even explain. Um, that's the deal. And then with Chris and I, it was, you know, for me to coach him my first year and, uh, and then he went on to a different team for us to be together again and be in that moment and know that we can accomplish more is pretty cool. Um, at the same time, I wanted to take a second to just, you know, feel that for a minute, for a second with him and book. Um, you know, Chris has meant so much to my career. He's meant so much to my life. I've shared it with a few people, but at the darkest moment of my life, Chris was right there. And, um, you know, one of the highlights of my career, he's right there. And so I'm just grateful to God for him and all of our guys. And uh, that's, that's where it is right now. I'm not really good at waxing eloquent about how I feel other than just telling you, I just feel grateful for uh, this opportunity and to be in this, on this team in this moment and uh, have a chance to move forward. Next up is Nick King with Channel 3, Channel 5, and then Dwayne Rankin. Monty, what was that huddle like? Is there reviewing the Jokic flagrant and just the response from you guys? You know, you use the word poise a lot. Did you see that from that point forward? Yeah, we talked about that. Um, it was just two series in a row where we had, you know, that kind of incident. And um, I didn't really think it was, you know, anything malicious. But in those moments, you have to regulate your emotions. And that, that's what we've been talking about all season long. Um, and so Chris got the, got the guys together and talked about it. Um, I got them together and talked about it. And, you know, everybody was on the same page. You know, we, we've been talking about winning. And um, in those moments, we got to get back to the task at hand. And, and we did that. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Kellen Olson. Coach, I'm going to go just a tad off, off the radar. Today is obviously June 13th. Depending on what happens with the Clippers and Jazz, the conference finals won't start until either the 20th or the 22nd. So that could be seven to nine days in between. How much could that rest? How much do you guys need that kind of rest, considering you know the, the run of every other day playing playoffs, basically from the start? I mean, everybody at this point is banged up and, and can use that type of recovery. Um, we've earned it and we want to take advantage of it. So, you know, I'll talk to the coaches and, and our medical staff and training staff and see the best way to approach uh, these next few days. But right now, I'm just not even thinking about that, man. I'm, I'm like just happy about what these guys have accomplished and, and grateful to be a part of it. And um, I hope our fans um, back in Phoenix and in, in the state of Arizona are feeling the same way I do. Um, this is a, a special time um, to be a Suns fan and um, everybody should enjoy it right now. Next, we're going to Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports and then Mark Schwartz. Hey, Monty, looking at the game, uh, we saw that fight from Denver we expected, but it felt like Chris had an answer for him every time. He was 14 of 19 for 37. What were your thoughts on his performance in the game tonight and just how the game unfolded over the course of it? I mean, what could you say other than, you know, he was darn near perfect all night long, um, scoring the ball, managing the clock. Uh, he and I had communication throughout the game on what was working. Um, they made some adjustments in their pick and roll defense. And so we had to change up where we ran our stuff. We got more in the middle of the floor and, um, He's just 
an unbelievable basketball player, but more than that, he has a will to win. And it's, it's impressive to watch and, and fun to be a part of. Next up is Mark Schwartz with ESPN, followed by Richard Science. Uh, the, uh, a couple of minutes ago, I think on the live broadcast, Chris got pretty emotional in the interview. And he said that just a few years ago, people had begun to write him off. Can you talk about the fuel that this guy has and, and what he has left at the age of 36 to lead a team like this with all these young players to this level? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy that the people did do that because it fueled an already highly competitive, strong-willed um, maestro of a point guard and basketball player. You never want to count out a guy like Chris, you know, and, and what he's been able to do um, for our program is I'd be here all day talking to you about the things that he's brought to the staff, to the players. Um, I've told our local writers about that <laughs> they've learned about diet, hydration, um, different methods of working out. But more than that, I think our guys can see his will um, every single day. He's, he's competitive, he cares, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be a partner with him. You know, for me personally, I've had the most success as a coach when I've had Chris, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. He's, he's an unreal basketball player, a great dude, and um, I'm just glad he's our point guard. Next up is Richard Science with Fox 10 and then Joe Von Coach, congrats on the win. Congrats on advancing. I want to ask you about not just winning, but the way you guys won. I mean, it seemed like you guys were the team with the sense of urgency in the first quarter, especially on the defensive end. Then when things could have gotten out of hand with the Joker situation, it was your team that kept its composure and went on a run after that. Yeah, I mean, that's <clears throat> something I, you know, I've said it before. We've talked about it all season long, about the poise that is necessary to – overcome in those moments. Um, and for such a young team, it, you know, it's an asset for us to have guys like Chris and Jay and Etwan and Langston in those moments because they've been in, in situations like that. They understand uh, the mental balance you have to have, especially on the road. Um, and so I wasn't surprised about the run, but it was, it was pretty gratifying to see everybody come together. Um, in that moment, and, and everybody was saying the same thing. You know, let's be about winning, keep our poise, and get this game. Next is Joe Von Buha with The Athletic, followed by David Aldridge. Hey, Monty. Um, you guys were an elite defense in the regular season. You were sixth in defensive rating, but you're second in the postseason. I'm curious, what areas defensively have you seen growth and, and progress with this group from going from already being elite to top two in the, in the, in the postseason? Well, I mean, Willie Green has, has led that charge. You know, he's run the defense all season long. Um, the will of our guys on the floor, you know, a lot of times you, you run schemes and things of that nature, but you, for the most part, you see guys flying around, putting out fires um, when they need to be put out. And then DA, he's the anchor. You know, that, that kind of presence in the paint, athletic guy who can block shots and guard different positions. Adding Jay for sure has helped our defense. He, he, he guarded everybody in this series. And Mikhail typically guards the toughest wing. Um, and we have them all over the place, guarding ones, twos, threes. And so, yeah, competitive guys like Chris and Book. And Chris has been an all defensive guy pretty much his whole career. Um, that, that has really helped us. And then the guys off the bench come in and they just play really hard. And, and that's most of it for us is the effort and will on the defensive side of the ball. Good time for three more. Next up is David Aldridge with, with The Athletic and then Greg Moore. Uh, hey, Monty, congratulations, man. Um, oh, you have been around a lot of really good teams and organizations over the years. And I wonder if this feels similar to other years where you thought, hey, we got a group that's, if we get a break, we can, we can, take, we can go a long way. This, this group is special. Yeah, I mean, DA, I, I felt that um, earlier in the year when 
our guys didn't complain about all the obstacles that were in front of us from the changes in our day, the COVID testing, the crazy schedule. I don't think I heard our guys complain one time about it. Um, we, we've always approached the game with a get to, not a got to mentality. Uh, we get to play basketball, we get paid a lot of money and um, our, our team enjoys playing. So you could kind of see it early on if we could persevere through those obstacles and a few things can go our way in the playoffs, you never know. Um, and again, DA, the, the competitive will of our players, you know, Book, uh, Chris and Jay, I mean, those guys, they don't want to lose anything. I mean, the arguments that we all have on the bench are, <laughs> are legendary, um, but it's all in an effort to, to win games. And so, you know, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself or get happy on the farm, but you could see a perseverance about our team this season when I didn't see guys complaining about the things that they could have complained about. Final two questions are going to be Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic and Gerald Breguet. Coach, congratulations on the wins. Greg Moore, Arizona Republic. We've been talking all year long about poise, um, especially through the playoffs. What's the key to doing it? Well, I, I think what people misunderstand is, you know, we, we want everybody to just be passive in those moments. And that's not the deal. You know, we're, we, we're not wanting our, our guys to be choir boys because we're not singing. So you have to keep your edge, but you have to also understand the moment. And I think the key for us is recognizing when we need the poise, but then rallying around each other in case one guy is a little off with his mental capacity. That's what happened tonight. Um, Chris got the guys together. Jay was talking. Etwan and Langston. Uh, we're doing the same thing and probably a few other guys. I think the connection of our team helped us um, and has helped us in those moments this year when, you know, quite frankly, we all lose it at times. Final question is Gerald Breguet with Fansided. Hey, Coach. Uh, Devin Booker in that closeout game last series put up 47, drops another 34 tonight. Um, I know a lot of people have been waiting to see what he would do in his first playoff series. Um, just what can you say about what he is doing in this first playoff series of his, and, and especially in these closeout games? He's not afraid of the moment. That's that's the deal. You know, I've been around a lot of players, um, and you know, a lot of guys talk about you know what they may do on the stage or hoping that they get there. I've watched him for two years work his tail off so he can be ready for these moments in this stage, and so. Um, he's fearless, and, and sometimes that, that fearlessness drives me nuts. Um, but for the most part, his fearlessness helps us on the big stage, and it has uh, throughout these playoffs. So I'm, I'm not surprised. I don't take it for granted, but I've watched him work, and I've watched his focus, and he and I have talked about this um, pretty much for two years. You know, we didn't know it'd be uh, this soon. But this was a part of our conversations uh, when he and I talked about, you know, getting to this point and having a chance to move on. Thank you for the time, Coach. Congrats. Yeah.